Um, so I said like we are Studio Joachim Moreno, uh, Carla Joachim and Jordan Moreno. Um, let's start directly by Carla. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'm 28 years old. I'm from France, actually originally from Paris, around Paris. I started studying uh, applied arts in uh, high school. And then I went to um, a school in Paris for like product design. It's uh, two years, uh, like a bachelor. And then moved to the to the design academy for a four years bachelor um, called Melon Activity. And in between, you did uh, an internship in Japan and I, Switzerland. Yeah, true. So during my yeah. studies, uh, we had one year around like exchange and internship, and I did my exchange in a, a jewelry and accessory course in uh, in Geneva. And then after, I went for an internship of six months in Japan in a product and interior company. So that's Carla. So uh, here I am, um, 31 years old, also from France. So I'm more from the west uh, coast of France. Um, I have a background in cabinet making. So I started with an apprenticeship in making furniture, kitchen. And that's where I discovered I, wa I was willing to do like more uh, the drawing and the design of the objects than making them. So I went to Paris in the same school as Carla, uh, the Ensama where I studied uh, also the, the same uh, bachelor. And then we, I also went uh, to the Design Academy of Eindhoven uh, later on. Uh, so we kind of followed each other. Mm -hmm. And during my uh, studies in Eindhoven, I also did an exchange uh, in Korea. And I went to Cambodia after for my internship. So we traveled a bit as well around. Um, yeah, that's many it. So let's uh, talk a also about uh, us yeah. two. So as I said, we met uh, in school in Paris. We did the Ensama together. Uh, we were already good friends there. So like we really started to, uh, we were working already on the same tables, let's mm -hmm. say. And, and we did that, uh, like we did one time one project together that actually was for work really well. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, when we followed, or well, not followed each other to the Design Academy, um, we continue more like separately, let's say, like we didn't too much work together. Yeah. But then when we are in our, our internship, because we were both in Asia, we started to call each other. You know, we were the only one uh, on the same timelines. So we really started to call each other, talk about the design we were doing there. And um, also we were not completely happy about our internships. So we were trying to start projects just mm -hmm. over the phone, over uh, some uh, Skype uh, calls. So that's what we did uh, there. Yeah. And we kind of realized that we had maybe the same envy of not being employed by somebody, but has the, the yeah, the strive to just say, okay, what, what if we can just start our own start practice. Our own practice. Yeah. Yeah. And the idea was to, because uh, after internship, we had to start our graduation projects and we came up with the idea to make a project together. Yeah. Uh, so we pushed a bit uh, the school, uh, the Design Academy and our teachers to do uh, one of our projects together. Like we were really saying to them like, hey, we want to work together in the future. So, so can we do at least one project to show you we can do it yeah. together? And um, they accepted it. And that was a bit the start of the studio because yeah. we decided to brand our spawn. I mean, the name, of course, it came, as you say, from our two last names. So Studio yeah. Joaquim Moreno was born. Um, so after the graduation uh, in the Design Academy, we started our studio, I said. And, I mean, it's not true. Like We started while we were students. So we graduated in 2018. Yeah. And then we already, after that, found a studio. So the picture you have here is the, the one we are right now. It's our place, like um, a workshop and a desk area. And uh, yeah, it's a bit the particularity of Eindhoven, the city we are in the Netherlands. It's um, it's quite a lot of industries, and uh, it was influenced by Philips and. Um, so it's an old uh, Philips warehouse yeah. where we are. So we have a lot of space, a lot of uh, volume where we can uh, work with quite some big projects if we want. Yeah, so it's and, a bit more like a shared place as well. So the yeah. for us, we have the container that you see above the the green one, yeah. and we have also uh, another uh, studio downstairs. So it's really like a kind of collaborative place. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, we work uh, mainly with products. Uh, we do some collaboration with uh, galleries. 
but yeah. usually it's more like uh, we do furniture and uh, small objects uh, from the daily life. So we wanted to show you first what kind of what are we doing now, and after we're going to explain a bit more the the, the process, process behind and all the details. Yeah. So you see like different projects. Um, there is a lot of crafts involved usually. Um, as we say, like we like to merge a bit of uh, traditional techniques craft techniques, but also like to see toward the future. So like more industrial processes, like looking into like 3D printing, AI, um, like trying to merge the two together to create a new identities. So you can see like some first pictures of projects we did uh, after, during the first year of uh, graduation. Yeah. And uh, this is also like what we do a bit more now, like- uh, Working with like furniture that are, um like functional, but he has, still has a strong aesthetics. Um, and it's more maybe towards, uh, work, yeah, work more like object and working with galleries and clients. And shops, mm -hmm. yeah. And also on the side, like, instead of uh, only doing our own project, we also help uh, other designers from the area. Eindhoven has a lot of designers. So sometimes we help to do like some uh, ceramic molds, mm -hmm. uh, some, uh, 3D prints, um, like we're collaborating a lot with uh, friends and uh, companies around Eindhoven and the Netherlands in general. Because we have the, the uh, we are used to also make our own objects. That's something that uh, all the collection that you that you see now, it, we are actually producing ourselves. Yeah, we start really from the beginning until the end. Mm. It's like from the idea concept to, to the, the making. To the prototype, yeah. to, to the final prototype. Yeah. Okay, uh, oops. So now um, it's a bit where are we going and what kind of projects we aim for and uh, our design identity. Um, at all those projects, we kind of exhibited uh, them during the Dutch Design Week last time uh, to show the identity we have, like kind of in between the past and the future, mm -hmm. the mix of crafts and uh, mm -hmm. industries or new techniques. So that's where we are kind of going. But one thing that we really like is um, to travel, to meet craftsmen and try to bring new ideas and uh, try to see if we can bring them further or like to help them in their practice, like while learning from them. So I think, I think we do a lot of uh, different things all together, but uh, so uh, part of like, oh, we produce objects and we, we design objects. We also being commissioned for the others. And as Jordan said, traveling so that's what we are also trying even now to find some like residencies or some projects yeah. and of course influence by what we were doing in Turkey uh, yeah yeah as you said uh, we were in Turkey uh, last year mm -hmm. so this is like a small um, <clears throat> project this is the kind of projects we are looking for now like yeah. uh, where we are going towards um, so we were in Turkey in Konya for three four days working with uh, a felt master uh, in Konya. So we tried uh, to create new uh, objects based on his technique and also to kind of challenge him while being also challenged for us yeah. on our side with his technique. So it was like really collaborating for like three, four days and doing the exhibition then in uh, mm -hmm. Istanbul later on. So yeah. Do you have anything to. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, let's go for the, um, the creative, creative process. processes. So we're gonna talk about um, two projects we made. Uh, Mocha, which is a graduation project we did uh, when we were students and uh, that we continue. continue until now. And then also the, the collection archetypes, uh, which is more what we do now, like all the objects. And there are two different uh, creative processes, like really different ones. Yeah, you can go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as I said, like it's, two different types of processes we have. So let's go for Mocha, the first one. Um, okay. Yeah. So you see the first picture of Mocha, it's, um, we call it a dripping ceramic machine. So basically the idea is like it drips ceramic in plaster molds mm -hmm. and it creates shapes based on a platform which is computer uh, controlled. It's kind of like a CNC, but it's a bit more um, rough in a way. So it was like how to use maybe technology to produce series uh, a series of objects, but they can still have a natural or uh, human touch to it. Yeah. So we maybe. have this um, this video. 
So this is like a three minute video like explaining everything from the the project. And then like we can go uh, step by steps what we've done to um, to achieve this. So there is no sound to the video just for you to <laughs> yeah, there are some titles. Um... <laughs> so let's sorry for the no sound uh, okay. part uh usually we exhibit it in places where it's quite loud so we don't need uh, any sound um so it's 
as as you've seen, like it was um, the video of the which explains a bit of everything everything from our graduation project. Um, this was more like the process process on how it works and uh, like all the different paths we had, mm -hmm. and we also had like many objects next to that. Um, but we want to explain you a bit for before like how did we come up with this and. Um... Oh, oops, sorry. Go back. Um, so yeah, the idea with experiments. So uh, we had this uh, this big question. Um, so the idea was like yeah, how to combine uh, industrial processes with uh, make a project in series, but still is unique. So you have these big ideas and you don't know where you're going. So as Jordan showed, so it's like you go quite broad, and then you find aspects that are interesting, and then you go again a bit more narrow, and you focus on the result you find interesting. Yeah. So like the idea is like. In a way, it's not the usual way of doing it, but like just creating quantity, like really having a, a lot of uh, samples, a lot of uh, tests, just without trying uh, to focus on one of them, just like creating, creating quantity to also create objects that you wouldn't expect at first yourself. We were really in the idea, like, what can we do with this? With this dripping, or what? What, um, what can more? What can we do with this technique? So we never really like narrow well, down yeah, yeah narrow down we're like okay yeah. what can we do and then at some point as i said you find some some aspects that are interesting or yeah. and then you kind of start to focus more on this and then you continue a bit like yeah. this so yeah as you said like you take some of the samples you mm. we check them like every time like okay those are the ones we find interesting mm. so we yeah we chose the, them and then like from those ones like we start again like we experiment we create more and more like mm -hmm. uh samples from each of those uh previous yeah. samples so, so like we create quantity 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 uh with better quality every time so uh, the idea is to take time so yeah. i mean what you, the result that was you see it's, it was almost six months uh, projects even more and even more because we continue yeah. after this um and uh, yeah just trying to and of this. course we we were not sure where we were we were going with this so we had just you know the, the main points but we were we didn't have any pure act goal or a function or any uh, any kind of thing like yeah, it was purely scientific yeah. way of uh, working like how far can we yeah, go with a technique with a technique yeah so we we're going to show you a bit where we came from the, the beginning of it and then we're going yes so like the really, really beginning of the project uh, was the idea of mixing. Uh, yeah, an initial process. So it would be extrusion, uh, injection. Uh, like uh, any kind of industrial process mm -hmm. and to create a natural outcome. That was kind of the main guideline. And um, yeah, it was just like a, a small workshop we did for one week at first. Mm -hmm. And we continued uh, with it for the graduation later. So we started with the idea of um, an extruder, because uh, actually Jordan had one for a project. From a previous project. And the idea of the extrusion is like you, you put a, a material or something and it comes out through a nozzle in a, like the smallest form. And so we imagine if, if you put, as you see now, a plate that is turning, we said we could maybe create object like this. Yeah. So we yeah, started to like look into all the um, industrial processes. We chose this one. Uh, we started to try samples with different materials. This one was uh, with wax. Okay. So we were melting the wax in this uh, metal tube yeah. and kind of dripping on a small platform that we were turning by hand yeah. just to see like, OK, can we create samples? Because the idea they... was like the, the wax technically would because if it goes from slightly liquid to cold, then it could like solidify. Um, so so that... this is kind of uh, the first first videos we did. Like uh, it's um, it's a motor with a platform and just dripping mm -hmm. wax. So, so as yeah. you see, the we had a trouble. To, the flow, the flow was quite hard to control. To control, uh, but you see already the, the longer we were we're actually turning it it starts to create something so if we go further like so of course it doesn't look any it doesn't look good or whatever but at least 
there was something to start yeah. from. Like we could, um, we have a first sample, we have a first case. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah but, okay. Sorry. <laughs> and then we also try with different mode we had. So we yeah. had no, let's say we need something to receive the work. So we use basically everything that we could, uh, could find that we could find like from previous projects like trying to see like okay can we build it so what you say is like yeah the the, the wax yeah the idea was like how to control the yeah the, the, the fluid, pouring the, the pouring, pouring of the wax because we had this this nozzle and we we were supposed to heat it uh but the constant heat so yeah we realized if it was dripping slower we would it was we would get more results. <laughs> so. Okay, so let's to, to go back. Um, we started with the wax, and it was extremely hard to control because when it um, when it gets hot and liquid, then it just goes through as a pure liquid. Mm. And if we don't heat it enough, it it's just uh, hard and it doesn't uh, mm. drip. So anyway, we tried to make objects out of this. Like you see here, like it was a uh, preparing for making a um, yeah. Uh, yes, because we saw tea. that the material at the end was the wax was so fragile or like breakable that what if we could cast it into metal? But yeah. The, Any, anyway, the wax was a, a prob problematic material, but because we had we clean, had the yeah. dripping. Yeah. Yeah. So we checked also like uh, we did a first research on how we could change that and what kind of materials we could use instead of this. And quite fast, we arrived to the ceramic and the clay in general. Because clay, you don't have to heat it, heat it up. Yeah. So, so the, the clay has always the same consistency. And we tried exa exactly the same with the dripping of the clay. Yeah. And already from this point, uh, we could imagine some possibilities. Like it's um, the, it's only flat. It's but... a bit more also stronger, and we had some uh, plaster mold lying around. So we yeah. <laughs> so it looks like uh, it's moving by the motor, but sometimes we were doing it by hands. So it mm. was really like crafty in in a way, just trying to show the the process to our teachers. So that was yeah. a bit what we got. Uh, when when the when the clay uh, hardens with a plaster mold, yeah. that's what we got. And then fired. And fired. It was um, giving this. So then we also were kind of. So from when when when, when we saw this, we were like, okay, uh, what is interesting? You can see some. Uh, if we use different colors, you can really see the difference. You can see a kind of pattern, even like um, gradients. Like gradients. We could make uh, like some uh, open spaces in some, uh, but this was like just running on one axis, so just mm -hmm. turning around, uh, and then we were moving it by hand just to change the axis. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, like kind of the first uh, mm -hmm. opening of the process, like where we do a lot of samples, and then from those ones, which we pick the ones we find interesting, so like gradients, um, yeah, stuff like this. And some from also from the flat and 2D, we said, can we actually maybe go in, into volumes? So yeah. that's what the philosophy of some of the samples um, that you see on top. But we we try to keep because also it was of course we try to like always have a make a presentation or like um, have like all those samples numbered and 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 uh, ready and then to know like okay for this technique we use this one for this like as we work like a more scientific yeah. approach yeah i mean you have to learn from uh, every sample you've done so that's what you said like uh, just writing down um like okay what are the possibilities from this uh, sample mm -hmm. like what's good in it what's mm -hmm. bad what mm -hmm. we can improve mm -hmm. in this one and um from this kind of lists we could choose the one we preferred mm -hmm. and uh, start again from this. And uh, since we have we had this kind of scientific approach, it's nice because now we can also show it to you right now. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we would have no pictures. Like really, like taking pictures of every steps, every like videos of mm -hmm. everything we've done uh, was really useful for us later on as well. 
Um, so yeah, we were saying that we have our samples and we generate new idea again from this. But the problem is, uh, as you've seen, like the machine was just like a, a motor with a small platform turning and um, the dripping was a previous project I've done. Uh, so we had to start to improve the machine and the mm -hmm. technique itself to be able to have better samples and better um, outcomes. So the two parts was where first the nozzle or like where, where are we going to drip or when the dripping is actually happening and also the platform that is receiving the, the molds. The molds. So how to create a turning effect and without losing too much friction. So of course we use the technique that we have at school. So we have a, like a, a lace, a metal lace, and we also have a, a la cuts. laser cutting. Yeah. So we started to make um, new generations of machines, let's mm. say, slowly, but um, trying to improve the, our technique. <laughs> so on the left, you can see like um, the first machine we had, let's mm. say. So it was controlled by Arduino um, on one axis, mm. but it was on rails. So we could push it to move it uh, slowly by hand as mm. well. Um, quite fast, we've seen like the um, weight of the molds could be really a problem mm. as well. Like you need like more more powerful uh, motors. Yeah. Uh, it can slow down sometimes. Uh, we had problems with friction, so we went to the second one uh, with like gears. Mm. Um, but so then we can like since it was even like more like craft research, then we went into more almost technology. How which motor should we find to make it uh, turn faster? Mm. Like which which um, we talked right. like it became a bit more like digital yeah. research yeah. in this case. And so we had the two paths, like yeah. researching the machine, how to improve it, and researching the the clay and the samples. Yeah. So yeah. these two paths were like going together on yeah. the sides. So it was a big back and forth. So like, uh, yeah. which code or how Arduino this computer program can we use to actually like go more or less faster? Yeah. So that was also what we liked. So we could do a bit of both. Yeah. Um, yeah, those machines, like, at least they could help us to improve the first samples. Um, so you so see. So that was a bit the setup yeah. that, we, that we got. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you see it, but there is a second motor uh, on the right of the machine. Mm. So this was like the axis we were doing by hand before. Yeah. So this one was moving the platform now. So it's like turning and one is supposed to move also in the yeah. in this direction. So um, this was kind of mid midpoint of the project. Mm. Like we had a um, machine working pretty well, mm. uh, some objects uh, that we could, uh, some samples we could yeah. do. Uh, yeah, that was the video. I'm going quite fast. Um, so yeah, that's exactly the dripping. The nozzle, we still had it. Yeah. Uh, the control of the of the flue, that was it. Yeah. So yeah, we. So you see the gears. The yeah, it goes faster and making gears with um, laser cut is not the best. <laughs> like it doesn't cut right, and you have issues. So you see, like nothing is straight. And uh... but we already see for now, for example, like the mathematical a bit part of it again. Like the the dripping was kind of getting more constant yeah. if, if we wanted. We could do like some uh, beginning of volumes yeah. as well. Like the samples could start to grow yeah. in a way. Um, yeah. So since we improved the machine, yeah, as we say, like we can improve the samples. That's where we started to do like pattern research, larger shapes. Mm. We made a, a huge series of modes to to see also the yeah because we realized the difference of the angle of the mold would create a different pattern mm. so as you see the more flat they are it gets more dots but if you go a bit more broader then we get more line yeah. and uh, we wanted to see what would be the, the range of pattern we could yeah. do with this uh, with these techniques and um also you see it in the bottom uh, of the picture there is some textures in the in the ceramic and that's something we didn't um, mm -hmm. expect at first but we found out really interesting so we also uh, dived into it later on in the yeah. in the project um, so as i said like taking pictures of the process uh, showing all the samples uh, yeah. is quite uh, useful so we had the um, graphic part that we really researched and also like 
trying to make uh, more volume on the on the yeah. left. Because the idea was we, we when we found out about the graphics, we were started to make lines and a bit of a structure. So then our, our thinking was, what if we remove the sleep casting part? So I mean, we keep just the pattern. Can we actually make a structure that would stand by itself? Quite fragile, but so what you see, what you see on the left is trying to drip in in a larger mode, and how how big and how far can we go? Yeah. Um, but then again, the machine is not uh, strong enough. Like yeah. creating a mold of like uh, I don't know three, four, five, ten kilograms yeah. uh, makes the motor like just not working and. Uh, where to improve once again uh, the machine. So we went to like, uh, we laser cut uh, metal plates yeah. like with bearings, um, like we improved uh, the machine once again like mm. to another level, which allowed us to- To have to more move, precise like, also. Yeah, to be more precise, to have like huge molds um, yeah. that we could test. And then it means also like bigger samples. Yeah. Um, so, so that's, that's yeah. Go ahead. No, that's the actual the final, not the final, but the machine that was shown uh, yeah. for the graduation, and we are still with using now. Yeah. Uh, so as you say, like it's the same principle. You have uh, now uh, the nozzle with a, a container that drips, so the liquid clay on the moving uh, platform. So the the mold you can change it, and then it's moving in the in the other axis. In, in the other axis. Yeah. And we had a, a space under to a store and... Uh... It's also about the presentation of your uh, yeah. research. Yeah. Like, it's nice, like, for example, if you do uh, samples always the same sizes yeah. or, like, al always the... I mean, that you, in a scientific way again, yeah. like, uh, just to show it. Uh... Yeah, that's also something I said, like, we... First, presenting our research was quite, in, quite important because, first, it would help to communicate our ID, yeah. but also to... Um, to give a more clear view. And as you said, like if you have like the same size samples, is the machine also look good? Yeah. Look good, even if it's functional. That was something also that we wanted to keep yeah. in mind. And also like the quantity of samples makes it strong yeah. in a way when you exhibit. Especially when you do research. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's the more open structure experiments. So we made really different molds and uh, we had a lot of, of course, fail and errors because something we realized, like, since we are not ceramists, the type of clay that we were using um, changed the outcomes changed every the time. Outcome. So in ceramics, uh, you can have, for example, porcelain, earthenware, and stoneware. So that's the basic that you can find in a shop. And those three has completely different outcomes. outcomes. Yeah. So like shapes in a porcelain would completely melt. Yeah. So you see the one that like completely open. Yeah. And, and then earthenware would stay uh, quite strong. Yeah. Stoneware would melt as well. Yeah. Um, so based on the different samples we would do, like mm. for example, the graphics, we would do it in porcelain mm -hmm. and the open structure, we would do it in um, earthenware. Mm. So it's also learning for us, like uh, we were not ceramists, but then we yeah. had to learn all those steps to achieve what we were trying to do. Mm. Um, so that's kind of the yeah. final pieces we've done for the open structures with earthenware. So we we actually graduated with so none of the we don't have an end product. So we wanted to show that with the techniques we found, that's how far we can go, and for sure we can go further. Uh, so yeah, now we can create self-supporting structure which are really fragile. Which are really fragile, made out of clay. Yeah, and. It's kind of a process no one would have thought about mm. uh, beforehand because we, even for us we didn't know we were going yeah. towards this. It's just like the path we yeah. research brought us there. But maybe if we just have, would have changed like one path at the beginning, mm. we would be somewhere else. Mm. Um, so I, I was talking also about textures before. Uh, yeah, this is like bigger samples of textures. So just dripping with. Um, yeah. uh, sorry. Because we realized, for example, when, when we drip, we know we saw we use the dots. We realized if you turn the plate upside down with porcelain, you can. It's, it's actually such a thin material, so you can see the dots on the opposite. Yeah. And then you can. We were not at all expecting this, and since the machine improved, we can. We we managed to get a really mathematical pattern, like yeah. every line, and then we would turn it goes exactly the same size centimeter. Yeah. So it was a uh, yeah playing uh, with uh, all the. Yeah. 
the machine and the Arduino and uh, like it's a mix of all the techniques together, like really a merge, as we were saying at the beginning, like it's, you know, in the identity of the studio, like traditional techniques, more like uh, crafty techniques, but also like going toward the future mm -hmm. and like trying to merge them together. Um, so this is like the graduation we had, uh, like explaining to the director what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Um, on the right, you have some uh, cups and bowls. So we were doing some cups and bowls with the technique at the same time as the graduation, so we could get some money and improve the machine. So that was our yeah. small business. That's how we actually self-founded the whole uh, research, research yeah. with the cups, because the techniques we said were enough, we made tableware, because then people can use it, use it and also uh, they want to contribute to the research. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, that was kind of the end of the graduation. But then um, as we were starting our studio, we used this research uh, as, a, as a step towards objects mm. that we could use in the daily life. So you see on the right, uh, like cups and uh, mm. that we were doing now, the quality is extremely different from uh, three, four years ago. Like yeah. the, I mean, now we can be serious, let's say, like we, we know about everything um like it's it's incredible the difference of quality but also like we worked with uh, restaurants for example like yeah. they liked the process and they wanted to have like some creative pieces in the restaurant because they were yeah. trying to reach a, a mission star so like they were trying to make like every mm -hmm. piece of the restaurant made with designers and also like now that what you see because well, when we finish with this with this graduation project, it's of course the question: What do you do with it? And and having a client came to us because we said we could make something that is almost unique for you because yeah. every piece, piece that are different. made is different. We yeah. can't make an, uh, the same one. So they like the idea of the uniqueness, and then we could also offer if we make a color for you. So that was a bit. So how, the first clients. Yeah. Like so how did. to use the technique we invented to another purpose? That yeah. that was uh, that was quite interesting for us. And that's why the caps are still working so well is because they are unique and they yeah, with less and they kind of showcase the techniques quite well. Yeah. Every piece is different. Um, and for what like we also uh, worked a bit more with uh, textures mm -hmm. to make like concept uh, of uh, foodwares. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just trying to bring more uh, a product, uh, yeah. um, more products in our research. And we realized like the, the texture could really go maybe with a uh, because porcelain of course is a food uh, food safe uh, material yeah so then if we can create the idea like with the line and we can maybe delimitate on the plates the food could play with the yeah. textures and uh you bring a new purpose to the plates mm. um and so now we continue to do all of these things like we sometimes do like new collections like new colors uh, we try new gradients, uh, plates, uh, additional things. But we did stop for a while. Yeah. Like I mean, it's um, we realized also like making a research, uh, it takes time, and it's not necessarily bringing any financial. Uh, well, we don't have any, for example, financial contribution if you do it by yeah. yourself. Yeah. Uh, so we did stop for a while, and as Jordan said, we are still making the cups and the ceram and some some tableware but not the research not the research yeah. itself and so we actually currently right now um trying to get into uh, some uh centers which would help us to develop more ceramic yeah. um like to improve the machine to improve mm. the quality of the clay like that's a level where we are not yet there yeah. like really uh the chemical base yeah. of the clay to make it yeah. stronger bigger so yeah, um, we are going to do a yeah. ceramic residency yeah. with actually the right knowledge to, to improve pull, this. probably yeah. push the research further, yeah. but we are still not sure where we are going. So that's a... But that's um, also the purpose of doing it while you're a student. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you're a student anyway, so you don't need to make uh, the income or running your studio. So it mm -hmm. was uh, the right uh, timing to do yeah. it for us. Um, yeah, so that was Mocha. <laughs> um, like a large research that we like to show every time uh, that we still yeah, produce, as we were saying. Uh, it brought us also a lot of other clients later on because people were interested by the research and the outcomes. And uh, they called us a lot for uh, ceramic projects yeah. in the end. So we did um, 
residencies uh, where we were making uh, other ceramics, uh, exhibitions. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. exhibitions. Like we went to Milan, uh, like right. in Switzerland and everything. And people started to call us only for ceramics, which is not the goal of the studio. We are designers in general. So we wanted to, um, I mean. It was during COVID also, like just to back, also go back on the context and the timeline, uh, we were doing MOCA, you know, 2018, 2019, and then, and then COVID happened. And, yeah. and we, yeah, we really had this moment of freeze and- We had more time. We had more time. And then we were thinking, okay, what do we want as a studio? What do we want to show and say, that's, that's made by Studio Joachim Moy. Yeah. And since people were calling us only for ceramics, we were like, okay, we have to break the image hmm. and show like, something as designers, different. something different, different yeah. to, to broad, um, hmm. To have to have a, like a like larger yeah. uh, base of products and uh, and that's where like the archetype collection uh, was born. So we're gonna just show you first the results, just to show you the. I don't know, I'm gonna talk uh, quite fast uh, about yeah, the process. Right. So this was like more like completely different process from the first one, as we were saying. Um, this is like really focus based, goal based. Um, yeah, or objectives. Was yeah. Make a collection. Furniture uh, collection. Yeah. That was the goal. Like we know it already from the beginning. Yeah. We want uh, four or five objects yeah. um, and bigger, different from what we were doing, different materials. Yeah. Maybe so, that go faster also. Yeah. So time efficient. So yeah. So the idea was like to really have like this large of objective of mm. a collection. Then like we made some precise goal, like kind of making a box with a lot of guidelines. Yeah. And like, like if you're a client. So look at you and say, I want this and this and this, we were doing the same yeah, process. Yeah. So within this box, we can really research and be creative, mm -hmm. but at least we have this box already and it's already set. So mm -hmm. we don't have to research what we want to do. And so, so from this box, then we open again. And like we what do are like the creative research. possibility yeah. within yeah. this box with, with what the universe we created? Yeah. And then we have the objects and improvements and you go back a bit. Um, yeah. So um, as we were saying, like it was during COVID, uh, we had more time. We were like, okay, we want to do a collection. We want four or five objects. Let's find the subject. Let's mm. do our own guidelines. So I'm just showing quite fast uh, what is the collection now. Mm. Um, it's like really metal and... Uh, so the, yeah. So the guidelines was like to show another vision, uh, bigger objects, more interior and architectural, because we want also to, yeah, like we had only small objects before. Mm. So we wanted people to call us for like bigger objects. Because you know, if you show furniture, for example, that you maybe call more to make furniture. And, and so that was yeah. a bit the idea. And as we were saying before, um, in our identity, we like to merge two worlds. So before it was like kind of crafts and technology, mm -hmm. Like the idea of uh, the past and the future. So this is the same, like looking into the past with techniques from the present or future. And also the fact is influenced by we are in Eindhoven, which is also a really industrial area. Yeah. So we have a lot of like manufacturing industries, yeah. industries and techniques. Yeah. And we wanted to focus on the collection. I mean, we say four or five objects, but I just to have a variation in, in yeah. size and it's. Uh... Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, to, 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 yeah, to give us a subject like we just went through our books and uh, we found out like, as I was saying, like uh, I did some cabinet making when I was uh, younger. So we went through the books and one of them was one of cabinet making and we've seen this page of uh, Roman art and uh, Greek or Roman ar yeah. architecture. And there's a bit influence of like, I mean, since we're so both for friends, there was a lot of architecture that is inspired by, that this. Is inspired by yeah. this and you have this kind of repetition of shapes that we find yeah. interesting so we kind of like okay maybe we should go towards something like greek or roman architecture so yeah. we also start a bit to, to research uh what kind of architecture yeah. and, and and where and so this is the subject like yeah. we put the base like okay roman greek or roman architecture and uh something, yeah and something from the industries mm. And we wanted to work with metal for quite a while. So we were like, okay, let's go toward like maybe aluminium yeah. profiles, like a, or, or yeah. steel. From, we didn't know exactly, but it's like it's aluminium. Yeah. So that was kind of our main uh, guidelines, quite fast, mm -hmm. like really, really fast. Uh, so we could research after mm -hmm. that. 
Um, so this <laughs> this is kind of the inspiration, inspiration from uh, Rome, like when you see all the architecture, like. Uh, so it's the yeah, Parco Arcolo Archaeological. And yeah, we find, you know, there is this repetition of shapes, as I said, like, you know, you have the, the column, um, you have the, the arches. The aqueducts, yeah. like, all these kind of things. So, like, all those kind of um, archetypes of, mm. the, uh, yeah. of the architecture were yeah. interesting for us. So we tried, like, now you see a bit of drawings of, like, what is the essence? What, what which shapes would represent the best, the Greek or Roman? Uh, architecture. So now it was a session of like a lot of drawings. Like what, as you say, we can see now the arches are quite in repetition, and you have a lot of this. Yeah, the columns also was yeah. quite of. Uh... It was really like to start to draw and see yeah. like okay, if we would see pattern in our drawings that we we would find interesting, um, pattern in the architecture mm -hmm. that and we would we, find interesting as well. We do a lot of like back to back a bit, so like. You know, you draw something, and I draw something, and then we improve the. We we go on to the. Oh, what if we actually? Yeah. So it was a bit of like this creative moment of just throwing ideas at each other and and see. Uh, yeah. See where can we go? But of course, uh, at this time we didn't know like which objects we were willing to do, mm -hmm. uh, what we could exactly do, and uh, where we were. I mean, we knew it was like bigger shapes. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, this is like kind of the continuity, like trying to see like the essence of the arches, of columns, of uh, so stadiums. Like the, the Arc de Triomphe that we have also in, uh, in France. France. Yeah. So it's a bit like all those monument that could yeah. be. But then like we, so we had to focus on uh, the translation. So we made um, quite fast again, like guidelines of what we wanted to do. Yeah, like the idea was like, what kind of object do we want? Yeah. So we. I mean, as you see now, we said maybe like a table, for example. Um, we had lights, table, lights, table, maybe something. Cabinets. To, yeah, cabinet, something to put an object on. Yeah. So that was a bit. The, um, so we made a list of a uh, few objects we want we wanted to achieve. Yeah. And merging it with the essence of the yeah. Roman architecture. Yeah. We started to draw the the objects like step by step, yeah. trying shapes, string, uh, patterns we would see. And as you said, like our focus was so on, on materials that are made in industrially. And uh, we found out that you know aluminum, first you don't have to weld it. So you can uh, and they made a lot of profiles in the industries, a lot of them that are like squared, round, uh, it is extruded. So we find a lot of um, creativity from those profiles because it's basic shapes. And we were like, okay, what if we can use those basic shapes to actually make our construction. Yeah. So the translation of the uh, aluminium profiles towards the Roman mm. aesthetics. So almost like on the top view, almost like an architect. You know, you see like, oh, if what if you put <laughs> like round shapes and yeah. yeah, what if you put the profiles to achieve this uh, mm. column or this uh, aqueduct? So it was still like going through like two D drawings, just trying to see, okay. If we build it like this, does it work? Does it mm. give the same idea we want from these uh, yeah. shapes we were seeing beforehand? Um, yeah, just back and forth as well. Mm. Um, this is like probably like a few weeks of work, <laughs> just uh, trying to get new ideas and mm. um, shapes and objects. Um, so like going more and more in details, like with the different uh, profiles we had uh, in aluminum, like trying to see like the real sizes from the industries. Yeah. Okay, like you have something in mind and then you see like the industry can't give it to you. <laughs> so you have to adjust as well. Yeah. Um, so improving step by step sort of all of our mm -hmm. drawings. And um, from then on, we had to translate it to 3D. Uh, so we did some 3D shapes to see if it's doable or not, in fact. So how to translate your 2D drawing into like yeah. a tangible. Yeah. So yeah, we go quite fast actually into 3D because for us, it's a tool that works quite well. Yeah, for as a creative tool, it's- uh, uh, Also we, because we were, sorry. Go we, no, we were doing quite big shapes. So we saw that making a, a, a model in real life would, would maybe not- Make sense. Make sense. Yeah. 
So this is like the first uh, 3D rendering, like trying to see like, okay, we wanted to, to have like a yeah, light installation, a cabinet that you don't see here, uh, table, columns, yeah. table, like uh, objects on the table for fruits. Um, and so you see like the, the light installation was like the arches of mm. the architecture. The columns are the real columns uh, from the Roman yeah. aesthetics. The table is more like a temple-like. Mm. And the food basket was more like a like an arena. An arena, like yeah. A, um, amphitheater. Yeah. I forgot the name. <laughs> so, at least we saw from the three D, like if we could make the shapes or not, and we saw quite fast like the issues uh, we could face. Um, it's like more uh, shapes. Mm -hmm. Like for example, right now you see like the lights that would be quite big and everything, but quite soon we found out we can't get this from the industries, like the big... Uh... Also your stability as well, how do yeah. you make that stable? Because sometimes you have this idea and then actually how do you make it Real. Strong, yeah, strong enough to stand? And the price as well, and yeah. Um, so yeah, from the 3D, going back to drawings to see like exactly in details. So, uh, yeah. Kind of decompose our idea. Yeah. So of course the colon for us was quite, as I say, it's like almost a construction game. We find all those profiles. How how do we can how can we adjust them or put them together that could actually give the impression of, of having a col uh, actual, the, the colon, the colon the colon itself. Yeah. Um, so we yeah we as you see we are quite precise also because aluminium. So as I said, we don't weld it. So we were on the base of uh, using screws. Yeah. It was also the idea of like we want to be sure that. We can dismantle it, or if there is, if you want to change it, we can, yeah. and also to make the parts easier re recyclable. Yeah, yeah. The idea is like we we don't really like um, to make objects which mix like really the yeah. two materials like glued together. Yeah. We like to have the possibility to fix it or to recycle it. Yeah, to recycle it or to make it last long as well. And aluminium, we did also like the this aesthetic was quite really industrial, but still. You don't have to over process it, or over finish it to have a good, fin or, yeah, good finish. Yeah. A good finish, mm. and it was quite light also because the idea also if you use steel that are in profile, you the whole piece would be like heavy, super heavy. Yeah. So yeah, more research drawings, uh, more 3D renderings to to make yeah. the the objects uh, real in mm. our yeah in our uh, computers, and uh, more. 3D translation after. Because, um, of course, before you actually start to make the real prototypes, we wanted to make sure that everything yeah, works well. Like the shapes are, the shapes are actually like giving the right um, proportion and. Uh, like the view would be nice, yeah, just, like yeah. um, everything connect together well. Because, yeah, it's quite a big piece. So if you fail, like if, <laughs> if everything arrives and then you can't make it. Uh, yeah, it's... so we wanted to make sure, yeah, before ordering or doing any. Yeah. So also test of different finish we could uh, mm -hmm. think about. Because um, the uh, aluminum, one of the nice uh, aspects is like you could anodize it. So it, it's a technique when you put the, the pieces in the bath and then uh, it gives, you can have different color, yeah. uh, still keeping the a bit industrial look of the aluminum. Yeah. So yeah. Trying to improve the size, like all the details. Yeah, which 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 screws do we do we use? Like it was a bit all those. And then. Uh... So once we received uh, all the aluminium, as we said beforehand, uh, we like to make everything ourselves, like from the beginning to the end. Mm. So in our studio, we have a large workshop mm. uh, with some machines that we share with the people around. Uh, so we have access to yeah welding machine uh, that we don't need now, but uh, like. Yeah, like a, um, drills, um, whatever we want. Uh, so we made uh, ourselves the columns and uh, all the parts. Yeah. We ordered everything already pre-cut, so we just have to do the the final uh, steps. So that's so nice because we don't we we don't have leftovers material. What yeah. what what we have is what we need. So yeah. we also wanted to keep our production quite efficient. Yeah. Um, and that's the nice part to be about those processes because they are made already by the industry. So we just need to ask, or oh, can I have just 10 cents? Yeah, and they would yeah. give you this. Yeah. So that's the fun part for us to yeah. go in the workshop and uh, also to, to make it uh, real, also to see from your renderings and your drawings. 
I mean, it's translating in real shapes and yeah. it's exactly as you thought about it. Mm -hmm. And that's the great part. Um, so that was the results? Those are, yeah, the result for the, the columns. Yeah. Um, kind of really close to what we, we've done in the yeah. rendering uh, yeah. softwares before. So we are quite happy of this. Um, those are the tables and uh, cabinets. Uh, they are anodized. So we have a different uh, finish for the aluminum. Um, you see it, it's mixed also with another uh, resin. Um, so it's, it's like not a, a resin, it's a... Recycle... Um, kitchen top. Yeah, kitchen top. Uh, yeah. So we also, because to break a bit down the cold aluminum, aluminum yeah. face. And as you see, we also make good pictures. That yeah. was also... Um, for every time we... Pictures are essential yeah. for communication. Yeah. So... Same for the sample of the Mocha project, like mm. taking pictures of everything, like taking good pictures, taking the time to, to do it mm. well, or asking friends to do it. So it helps us to also show what we are doing or yeah. our process to and, to, and to communicate yeah. in general. Um, yeah. Then to further communicate, we made a, an exhibition yeah. uh, during the Dutch Design Week 2021. So we made uh, this exhibition with all the objects we had, but we also invited friends yeah. uh, or people we didn't know in a way. It's called uh, A Blast from the Past. Yeah. So the idea was, like Jordan said, we find designers that uh, match, had also, match the subject. Yeah, had also the same identity. So you see a bit like the, the white uh, um, a bust or like half, half shapes are also made by a, an artist in Paris. And yeah, it was a bit like, how can we all together make the subject stronger. Yeah, the subject stronger. Yeah. So yeah. Was how can pieces can interact yeah. with each other? And that's our workspace yeah. also. So it, it is. It was clean. It was clean, but that's the workspace. Yeah. And um, also the fact of showing it during an exhibition, we see quite fast uh, the feedbacks. Mm. All of those pieces are the first prototypes. Mm. So we see what works, uh, yeah. what people find interesting, um, what are the issues. Uh, also, like it's 10 days, so you see also yeah. uh, if the light works well. Um, yeah. So it's it's good uh, feedbacks for us to see uh, all of yeah. our pieces in, uh, yeah. in this uh, exhibition. But for example, you don't see the, the, the light, for example, we realized we had to put a bottom plate yeah. because it's, it wasn't the thing like, oh, you want it just by itself, but it doesn't stand. So if you put a bottom plate, then it, it bring more stability, yeah. all those kind of details. Yeah. So yeah, we, uh, we had a lot of good prototypes uh, and we improved them uh, further after, after this. Um, also, like there were a lot of big objects uh, which, are, which were act, asked a lot um, for, for exhibitions. Or publications. Yeah, for so publications, for, for pictures. But it's not what uh, is being sold in the end. Yeah. Like people were willing to have like smaller pieces of the lights. So that's where the feedbacks were interesting. Like we made uh, yeah. smaller pieces. So we decide like, oh, what well, if we can get the same principle of the of the arches? Like if we go back uh, the arches. Yeah, we had not a big one. We made a medium one, and then the small one. We said, okay, in the same principle, we could have something smaller. Then yeah, people could take home. Yeah. So this is kind of for go to now object as well. Yeah. Like, so. Uh, I mean, of nights happen also through like 2021, 22, and now. Um, like the lamp now is available in, in two versions. So we have a, a warm light and a cold light. Yeah. And we every time improve tiny things. So you put the name under, you change the, yeah. some, like the neon, depending what you find on the company. Yeah. So we spend a lot of time, like actually quite fast designing the project itself. But making, now, making it good is the longest part. Yeah. Like to it's... make sure that it's like, user proof you know, that that like people really use it well and then uh, yeah. and also you have to have like the best quality in the end like it's so it's prototyping mm. doing the object improving prototyping yeah. like so now we are in a phase that since we produce we prototype everything ourselves we do small batch uh, small batch um and then we sell them ourselves and then always, sell galleries. Them always galleries yeah but also we um, going to work uh, with more with bigger industries mm. that we will sell it uh, uh, on their own. Mm. That's um, the next part, let's say. Um, yeah, of course, we're always inspired by uh, you know archetype and what can we do and how this profile. Yeah, so on the same subject, we made yeah. more prototypes last year. So just to, to give us like um, 
new ideas as well. Yeah. So like we went a bit more into mirrors. Um, how to how the profile we can use to also create those still like a bit reference to the Greco-Roman architecture. And this was like the last exhibition uh, during the Dutch Season Week uh, 2022, um, where we merged all the projects we've done. So like the ceramics, uh, the new mirrors, the previous collection of archetypes, um, trying to show our identity as designers. Because yeah. we realize sometimes a lot of people ask us, like, what is the relation between ceramics and metal, you know, for the mocha and archetype? But for us, it was quite clear, but we found it important to repeat it again and then yeah. say that, yeah, we do merge past and uh, future and anyway. then different things that would come together yeah so that's kind of our last steps um yeah the question is about the future now um we kind of focus on improving all of those pieces and making yeah. it more like uh, accessible to the to a larger public so as we say like we work with galleries uh, to sell them but we also try to work with uh, some larger producers so to have like better prices and um, the quality would be different than what we do ourselves. So it would be to, uh, just to say like, so it would be like how to translate this object that we produce ourselves into a mass, mass produce yeah. object um, that we can uh, sell with a, yeah. a shop. But also like, um, so improving all of those objects and searching for like a new project related to mm. crafts and uh, technology. So well. now we also work a lot sometimes with galleries and they have different theme and they have different, uh, project ID. Yeah. So what from what way from our identity and the base we created now, we try to get more projects uh, on the same ID. Yeah. But also we search for ourselves different, as I say, like residency. And so it's a bit part of the Yes. Um I think this is the end. Yes. So yes. I Thank think you. we don't make it too long. Yeah. <laughs> um we might have gone quite fast on some parts. Uh but please, if you have any questions, yeah. uh, we can go back on what any it... subject. Feel free to to ask anything. Uh, we know so much of projects <laughs> that sometimes we forget some parts. Yeah. Uh, that's also the hard part sometimes to communicate uh, to new people. <laughs> like you know so much what you've done yeah. that you forget what's coming from all these kind of things. So uh, yeah, thank you. Maybe yeah. if Naz, you want to take over or uh th thank you so much uh for sharing uh, your dirty design process uh very, very open-hearted let's say they uh, may have uh some questions so we can go uh forward with the um q a part yeah mm -hmm. totally. and if we want to share again let let us know uh do you have any questions uh i actually don't but i uh, know them from our second year project i was uh, designing for their uh, mocha uh, project and interior place yeah it was, did, did you contact us i think i remember yes i, I was. remember like uh yeah like the interior and uh, but that's how we i mean that's why now we communicate with yeah you. <laughs> like i remember like you tell us so i think it's it's yes okay. you're the pin pin, yes. pin connection Dilara. thank you so much I didn't know that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing to hear from your uh, mouth in the first uh, hand uh, about your presentation. Thank you for Thanks. coming. <laughs> I have a few questions, but uh, I want to hear uh, theirs first. From be shy. We are. <laughs> no, we're like, uh, yeah, if it's, even if it's about the studio in general, um, yeah process or like yeah no, we are we are open to to share and if you're not sure but uh, you, you, can, you, can, you can write it down yeah, if, you write yeah. if you don't want to if you want to ask later on yeah but uh, it's nice for everyone to to ask in the front Mm, I have a question about the size of the molds um, you, you are uh, talking because uh, you changed the machine uh, according to that to make uh, make it bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, in the final products, uh, what is like the mm, maximum size of the uh, molds? 
Um, it is around 30, 35, no, it's, it's 40. More, yeah. yeah. For, 40 centimeters? Yeah, 40, 40 centimeters. centimeters. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was like around, I would say, 10 kilograms. Like, and uh, in, you can we can go quite high. Yeah. Um, we had shapes which were like uh, almost 40 centimeters yeah. high. Um, and of course, the, the idea was like, because now the, we had the, to make the plaster, we would use um, a, a turning platform. Yeah. And sometimes you can also be quite limited by the from the general by the machine by the machine itself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's it's also a question that we still have like can we go bigger? Yeah. That that it's still an open question. That's where we would like to do a, a residency to improve this, like uh, maybe to bring new path in this research, but also like to make bigger pieces and stronger so pieces. So not not, yeah. not so much limited by the machine we yeah. made, but more by. Uh, yeah. But um, yeah. So with your hands, so you can see. Just, you see, um, and, <laughs> thank you. Not, uh, like pieces that we. Yeah. Mm. And, and you told and and you told us uh, that, that they are very fragile. Uh, and uh, I was yeah. thinking how how fragile uh, they yeah. are. Like it would mean that <laughs> we we can't put anything in it. It's really out piece in research. So if you would squeeze your hands, you would probably break it. Yeah. Mm. So we can manipulate it. So I mean, you know, as Jordan, you know, is taking it and, and moving it around. But um... that was one of the kind of the goal, like to make it really, really thin and the biggest possible, just to see how far we could uh, yeah. reach the breaking point almost. But mm -hmm. we were still quite limited, as you say, with the technique, like because the idea was to make it stronger. Stronger, we would have to drip quite long. So yeah. you, you know, the mold is dripping for at least. This one is almost 35 minutes on yeah. the same location. Yeah. Um, so, but so we would actually start dripping like on the top here, and then it would turn and turn and turn and turn. And then the more you turn, the more it creates like thickness and thickness and path. So it creates those lines. But the problem is like if you make it too long, then it you don't have enough holes. Like the metal will just feel himself and yeah. then. And also like the clay dries at the same time in mm. the mold. So it's, um, it's a matter of balancing the yeah. timing, how dry is your clay. And how thick like, can we go to make yeah. it stronger? Yeah. So yeah, it was, it, it's still, it's still a question of the balance between like, yeah, can we make it stronger? So we believe that maybe if we change the material, uh, so, or, or if we, for example, uh, add something to the material, maybe it could make the, the yeah. whole structure stronger. We basically, I mean, we are designers. You know, in our mind, we are designers. Like we can work with any kind of materials. Uh, we do things in three D. Yeah, we think in 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 in, in terms of using materials. We make objects and everything. That's uh, our goal in in general. But then, since we had to do this project with ceramic, we we've learned a lot, and like every week we would improve uh, our knowledge. So you dive into it in order to achieve your goal. So yeah. at the end. At the end, yes, you know maybe as much as <laughs> some ceramists. And we made our research as much as scientific. Yeah, but it's not our uh, core uh, identity in our minds. I think we now yeah. we've reached a point where our knowledge is 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 as far as we. We need someone else now outside. We, yeah, yeah, we would need someone else yeah. from the outside that yeah. has really deeper knowledge. But we also quite like this in our identity. We we when we find a subject that we find interesting, we just dive we just dive into yeah. it yeah. till the moment that we think okay we reach as much as internet and everybody can teach me yeah. so it would be interesting to have professionals so like professionals uh, that would um, masters yeah yeah but uh, for example in the ceramic um at the beginning we didn't even know like the differences in between uh, earthenware and uh, porcelain yeah. and now we can do like um the balance with uh our own glazings and like all the chemical details to get the colors and uh, we, we also had a, a, in our school a great workshop and guidance yeah um that's also why design academy and the school we were in uh focus my uh, was focused a lot on material and we had a lot of workshops so like metal workshop wood workshops ceramic workshops so we also had the opportunity to test yeah. test yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um yeah it's like learning still learning and uh improving like Every two weeks when we do like new pieces, we encounter a new, not, <laughs> not an issue, but uh, it's like 
something is surprising every time and we're like oh okay we have to learn this like uh why my glazing is not working this time like i did exactly the same as before but um maybe we can just be ceramic specialist we know we, we know ceramics like we make ceramics yeah, but uh it's but not... the cool ourselves expert would be uh no there are, there are people who are better <laughs> yeah. for sure yeah can i ask you yes uh, can you since they are so delicate can you use your broken pieces again and again uh with crunching them and uh adding water or something like that or uh, are they go to waste every time? Or can you create something new with it? So um, clay, if it's not fired, you can use it uh, forever. Like, uh, I mean, forever, yeah. Let's, let's say if it's just dripping and it's a kind of uh, fail, we just mix it with water again, or like with some uh, water glass or uh, different materials, and then we can get uh, the clay back and use it again. So there is almost no waste. Instead of if you mix so, it with plaster and then you have like... So the one we show you now, the, the shapes, if we break it now... Then we can't use it. Then we can't use it because the problem yeah. is... So, you know, when you see clay, it's, uh, it's almost like it goes from liquid to a bit like uh, this molding right. clay. Yeah. And it's mixed with water. As soon, as soon as we fire it, so we put it into like high temperature, so we go almost up to 1000 degrees. That moment, it removes all the um, all the water from it, and it gets into a solid shape. Then we can't do anything anymore after. So there is actually there is still company that you know you could break it. Yeah. You could break it and make it super fine, and probably we use it again. But but this we can do. But like from the clay not fired, yes, we use it again and again mm -hmm. and again. That I mean, it's it's important also for us. Like uh, yeah. you know, for example, when we make cups, um, when we get the cup out. We don't just have the cup. We have also like a small ring around. So we cut it, we put it back in water, and we mix it again. That we're gonna yeah. we're gonna use it again afterwards. So uh, I think ceramic are quite uh, sustainable in general. Yeah. Maybe not the plaster molds and uh, some chemicals uh, which yeah. are used, but uh, otherwise the clay itself you can use it forever. So that's why when we were dripping a structure and then we would take it out and it would break. Then we can just use then it again. Then we can just use yeah. it again. Okay. Thank you. I'm just talking about something else, but um, like, for example, the project, the dripping project is about ceramics right now, but we could also think about something completely different. Like, as I was saying, like, you can open new paths. So at one point, we almost researched uh, metal and oxides. What if you drip oxides, I mean, uh, acids. Li acids, which oxide the metal. Yeah. So you can also work exactly with the same process on different materials and have like maybe patterns on metal which oxidize yeah um, so you see we already have so many more ideas too yeah. when we so it's yeah the creative it's process. a non it's a non-ending research yeah so we want to we still want to keep it open and yeah. thank you again um it's so good to hear uh all the des design and research process and all the uh, prototypes uh, that you've been talking and the final products uh, also. Uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for sharing your time and your uh, projects with us. And as we said, if we don't, uh, you, you can always write us, maybe if you share our email and if you have any more questions, we can. Or even Instagram, like just yeah. send us a small message. Um, maybe we won't answer directly, but we will try to, to do our best. Yeah. Uh, uh, you were talking uh, your future projects in Turkey. If you uh, will be here again, uh, we uh, also want to host you in uh, our uh, faculty. Definitely, we would be also curious to see and what 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 are you what, like? Yeah, what's going on? Uh, what's going on? Your, on yeah. 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 So, so, yeah, because we went to the um, Turkish Design Council mm -hmm. as well. We we met them, and we also. So last the Design Week, we invited uh, the Turkish Design Council to exhibit in our space yeah. uh, because we had the craft project in Istanbul, uh, no, in Konya and the exhibition in Istanbul. We asked them also to come here to exhibit it here. Um, but we don't like, I'm sure they were still busy with the project. I mean, 
probably less of it right now, but uh, if there is a possibility for us to come back to Turkey, yeah. and probably to Istanbul, we'll then we contact you. Uh, yeah. contact you. Yeah, please do. Or if you come to the Netherlands, sure. on the opposite, <laughs> if you decide to, because we still host the Dutch Design Week every year. Yeah. Uh, it's still quite an interesting uh, design and, and also a lot of research and a lot of innovation, which can be quite inspiring yeah. for, for anybody. No worry. Thank you, guys, for Thank you. <laughs> Have a nice day, and uh, yeah, feel free to reach us. See you. Goodbye. Bye.